there was extreme violence happening in Washington, D.C., right in front of Union Station, where they actually took down the American flags that fly in front of Union Station and burned them. It was Speaker Johnson, a team of Republicans went out last night and re-raised the American flag in that location. There's also, I think, one of the, a version of the Liberty Bell totally was defaced with pro-Hamas language, not just pro-Palestinian or anti-Israel. You notice there it says Hamas is coming. I mean, so that's what they wrote on the statues that were, again, the American flags were connected to. So that's happening while Prime Minister Netanyahu is speaking. I still think, you know, again, the majority of Americans support Israel and certainly don't support Hamas. And so many of these Hamas supporters, I thought Prime Minister Netanyahu said it so well when he said, you know, when he sees these signs on college campuses, gays for Hamas, it's like uh, signs by, held by chickens for KFC. And that's what we've said all the time. Because if you, if you live that lifestyle in those countries, you're executed. Well, I have a message for these protesters. When the tyrants of Tehran, who hang gays from cranes and murder women for not covering their hair, are praising, promoting, and funding you, you have officially become Iran's useful idiots. And yet, well, we see this in the street often uh, when, there's, when they send the reporters out to talk to these individuals, and they ask questions about that. Well, how do you feel about supporting a group? I mean, they're, they're, we saw in the, uh, in the video that we played in some of the photos, uh, not just Palestinian flags that they flew, by the way, where the American flags were, but Hamas flags, uh, ISIS flags. What is interesting as well, and this is from the elected Democrats in this country, you had the, the radical left, uh, the squad members, you had Rashida Tlaib, who did attend the speech so that she could hold up a small sign in front of her the entire time that said war criminal. So she went there in protest, but she did attend the speech. But Senator Chris Murphy, who's not really on the Israel issue, someone you'd expect to go full bore against Bibi Netanyahu, right. uh, but he tweeted out, at, he kind of live tweeted during the speech, and he tweeted out around 3.30 yesterday, he said the speech was more of a commentary of U.S. politics rather than a path forward for Israeli and U.S. security. The suggestion that any American who objects to the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza is a Hamas sympathizer was way out of bounds. Now, that was during the speech. It's as if he didn't see anything that happened in the spring across college campuses across this country, where it was not just uh, anti-Israel protest, it was pro-Hamas, pro-terror protest. But then just five hours later, he tweeted this, didn't take down the other one. I've seen some disturbing images coming out of today's protest at the Capitol. I'll always support Americans exercising their First Amendment rights, but pro-Hamas cheers and messages of hate and anti-Semitism have no place in our country, period. They're so blinded by their dislike of Bibi Netanyahu and so blinded by their party's stance at this time that he genuinely is able to keep both of these tweets up and not reference in the second one, the first one that says uh, that, that there's no way, this is way out of bounds to suggest that these people are Hamas sympathizers and later is saying that they are have pro-Hamas cheers and messages of hate. Right. So which one is it, Senator Murphy? It's like he's been blind to these protests. These protests have been full this, uh, this summer that, and of course, in the school year. Really, I mean, this all started before the new year. So it was the real protest, I think, began really around December, January, like when people came back to school. Because initially, you know, there was the shock of what had happened on October 7th. And I will tell you, just it was very emotional uh, going through that speech again, hearing that again, um, hearing some of our clients' names who did not survive, uh, who did not live. Uh, one who was that uh, cl uh, person he referenced who uh, was uh, escaping Hamas and got caught up in, fi in a firefight and uh, did not survive his escape. And, you know, th th those kind of, um, they weren't just stories for us. Those were clients of ours and their families. And so I think he did a very good job as a reminder of what Israelis are dealing with every single day. Uh, whether you're an Israeli who supports him politically or not, uh, there is a lot of unity when it comes to, in Israel, when it comes to, of course, uh, defending themselves. We saw now, you know, Vice President Harris has put out a statement that it's bad to do that. Uh, but, you know, that's like as far as Democrats will go right now. It's, it's, oh, it's not good to burn the flag. It's, it's not good to support anti-Semitism. I mean, like that's a statement you even need to make and is kind of sad in, in 2024. Yeah, Jordan, I must say it was a bit half-hearted and way too late from uh, Vice President Harris. And frankly, the Democrat Party 
um, has not been willing to say to the American people, no, we think we stand with Israel. We're against anti-Semitism. We think violence is bad. Um, they'll they'll utter it in, when forced to. But in the end, they're not doing the actions that actually prevent this. This happened in President Biden, Kamala Harris's Washington, D.C. yesterday. Um, you know, I'm with Justice Scalia. Someone may have the constitutional right to burn an American flag, but it doesn't mean that that action isn't un-American, doesn't demonstrate their hatred for this most exceptional nation. And when I when I watch Democrats uh, pussyfoot around this and just simply refuse to call it for what it is, a hatred of our nation, the support for the very terrorists that are holding Americans hostage today, we should never forget there's still Americans held there. Uh, when, when you see them saying, no, we from the river to the sea or uh, they are pro-Palestinian, what they really are saying is they support the terrorism that is taking place there. They'll deny it, but it's true. Supporting the terrorism that's taking place there because they've simply refused to call it out for the evil that it really is. We saw Hamas flags. We saw ISIS flags. We did see that, you know, there were over you know 200 arrests or so made, but there were a lot more than 200 people there violating the law. I, I do question whether or not, you know, the FBI and Department of Justice is going to open up a division uh, because I see plenty of these people on the screen that don't have masks on to start knocking on some doors like they did with January 6th and make sure that every one of those people who showed up and, and committed some kind of crime, even if they were just trespassing by being on those streets is at least arrested and prosecuted for that crime. Um, because even if it's not illegal to burn the flag, where they burn the flag uh, certainly was, where the defacing the monument certainly is. Um, and so, uh, again, it, it's kind of this statement of, oh, we denounce their actions, but, well, are we going to, is anything going to happen uh, to these individuals who did this? He talked about how that every time they took out a Hamas uh, branch or a Hamas soldier, that was one less terrorist who wanted to ultimately attack the United States of America. I mean, that's their goal. So when they take out these terror groups, they're not only protecting Israel from future attacks and more immediate attacks, they're also protecting the United States and our allies and our interest in that region from attacks in the future because they are funded by the groups who are uh, trying to spread these radical groups and connect with these radical groups around the world to attack Americans. And we, we heard that yesterday. That's why the mobs in Tehran chant death to Israel before they chant death to America. For Iran, Israel is first, America is next. So when Israel fights Hamas, we're fighting Iran. When we fight Hezbollah, we're fighting Iran. When we fight the Houthis, we're fighting Iran. And when we fight Iran, we're fighting the most radical and murderous enemy of the United States of America. Their number one goal is the destruction of the United States of America and, of course, a nuclear program. We saw how the U.S. was able to assist Israel in stopping that barrage of drone attacks from Iran.